Fear is the first thing she remembers. Next comes the smell of the thing. Burning pitch, ozone. It sticks to the roof of her mouth, and there is nowhere she can go to escape it. By the time she hears the skittering of its claws against the stone, her eyes fly open, and she reaches for her sword. There, the monster with talons as long as a hunting hound, hundreds of sharp teeth, sightless, vestigial sockets. A girl cowers opposite the beast, pressing herself onto the cold stone wall. Between the girl and the monster, there is a body curled on its side. An older woman, her throat torn open. The blood slicks the monster's chittering jaw as it lunges for the girl. What strikes her then, beyond the fact that she has eyes and can see, is that none of this is new to her. She knows this place. She was here once. This mildewed dungeon is only a stone's throw from her old family home. She knows that that girl has been here for a week, possibly more. That she is hungry and thirsty and has lost all hope. She knows that the woman on the ground is the girl's mother. This time, she does what the girl could only dream of doing. This time, she has a sword. The creature lunges for the girl, but she steps between the beast and the child. Claws rake against the armor as it closes in. Just as it opens its jaw to bite her, she drives her sword through the roof of its mouth. Black tar bubbles from the wound and drips down the length of her blade. She withdraws it. The creature, rasping, curls up on the ground. Another cut sees its head separated from its body. She kicks it away. So easy. It had been so easy. Had she ever found this sort of thing difficult? Memories knock about in her head. The girl needs to go somewhere. There is something else she should be doing. The woman needs a proper burial, but she will never have one, and it is best not to dwell on such thoughts. And wasn't there something else? What is it that she's forgetting? She shakes her head. The girl has thrown her arms around her in embrace. She tosses the girl's hair. You're safe now. Thank you, answers the girl in a voice without any trace of youth. You did the right thing. She looks between the creature's body and the dead woman. Keeping people safe is what I do. So it is. But keep in mind that you are seeing this with new eyes. Once, this was difficult for you. Steps down the hall. Heel, click, heel, click. The girl's eyes begin to glow. She points to the door. A splicer is coming. The word tugs at something in her mind. The thing she's meant to remember. It occurs to her that she should find a girl with glowing eyes strange, but she doesn't. There's something familiar about her too. So she kneels down to get a better look. Two thick black brows with a glossy hair to match. Hair that never stayed put in anything but the sturdiest of braids. Round cheeks her mother used to pinch. A scar along her jaw from a fall she'd taken. What was it her mother had said then? Wounds like that belonged only to the flesh. To wear a scar was a choice. And at the time, she'd liked that choice. It made her feel braver, even if the cause of it wasn't so brave at all. A sword sliding into a sheath. She understands now. The girl nods. Elspeth, it's time to wake up. Continue reading on magic.wizards.com story or click the link in the description.